Greetings everybody, The Mechanist here, and today's episode where we are building a farm and doing a little housekeeping as it were, making a few items and doing a few other things. With that being said, I do hope you enjoyed the video, and if you do, please consider hitting the like button and <coughs> impacting the subscribe button. It'll help on the long run. With all that out of the way, I do hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, it's good to be back in Terraria. I always say it, but it's always true. It's good to be back home in my home, away from home and I'm not going to get stuck in a loop again. <laughs> so, last week, if you don't remember, we were boss hunting to get a dev set, which we finally do. We have this dev set. <laughs> you know, it's a nice little simple one. I like the sun. But, yeah. And I decided that if we ever get a dev set again, we'll always wear it in the next episode. So, that's what I'm doing. Wearing the dev set. So, what's on the plan for... or what's on the plan? What's the plan for today? Well, I have a really simple plan in mind. We are going to be making a truffle worm farm. Now, this isn't an optimized farm you could probably find, you know, somewhere on the internet. This is my own personal truffle worm farm. Basically, the story is I was just farming up for mushrooms and accidentally made a truffle worm farm when I visited in hard mode. <laughs> so, I'm going to be recreating that and it works pretty well. I'm curious to see if it still works. In addition to that, we're going to be changing our wings, because I feel like we need some more, how do you say, maneuverability. And I have just the perfect thing in mind. It's going to be a bit of a short one. Maybe after we got everything said and done, we'll fight the solar eclipse again and one golem, because, you know, we're still hunting down the moonstone and the sunstone we need. But that's the plan for today, so let's get started with mobility options. Alright, here we are at my glow shroom farm. Which, by the way, this whip's gonna make it really easy to collect all these glowing mushrooms. <laughs> now you might be asking, why are we here? Well, we're here for two reasons. One, the mobility item, which I said we're gonna go for. But two, we're also here for glow shroom seeds. Just to help speed up the process. I'm sure we have some at base, but you know what? A little bit more cannot help. Can't help. Can't hurt. That's the saying I'm looking for. <laughs> Is that everything? Well, I'm sure I couldn't mine up these trees, but that would be boring. So with that being said, let's go find us a glow shroom biome for this farm. And here we are at the Shimmer. Now you might be asking why we have the Shimmer. I thought we were supposed to be making a... What do we call it? I forgot now. A truffle worm farm. That's it. Well, that's because I identified the perfect place to build our truffle worm farm. And to do that, we need the power of the Shimmer. So if we just fall through the world real quick, I love how this looks. Here we are at our glow shroom biome. I'm picking this one because it's fairly isolated, which means spawning should be hopefully limited. So, you might be asking, what does a mechanist truffle worm farm look like? Well, it's pretty basic. Don't expect anything flashy. So first, we need to identify a base. So, this is going to be our quote-unquote base. Now, I don't mean base of operations, I mean a base to start at. <laughs> our little tiger is going to make sure we can build in peace, which means we hopefully won't be dying. So, let's collect up some extra seeds and whatnot. And let's get to work. So, step one. Make rows upon rows upon rows, similar to our glow shroom farm we were just at in the sky base. So, I'll be right back when that is done. Alright, just checking in, and as you can see, it's, you know, on its way. More importantly, let me just cra crash. <laughs> Wrong game. Catch this truffle worm to illustrate my point real quick. Yoink, and guess what? We have five truffle worms just from building the farm. It's not even fully operational yet. <laughs> so, I'm going to make a couple more rows, probably just one or two, and I'll explain how this works. So, be right back. Alright, so we're back. And, as you can see, I basically finished up nothing but a lot of rows. And, yeah, eventually I have to do, I do have to spread more of the glow shroom to make it more places for the worms to spawn. But basically it's just eliminating where the worms can actually spawn. As you can see from the location, very blocked off. And places down here are already flooded with water. So, basically the only place the worms will be able to spawn is here. So I'm going to finish spreading all this, then create a couple columns, so no matter where it spawns, we can get quick and early access to it. And yeah, it's very basic and simple, and as you can see, where did I put them? Eight 
Truffle worms, just from building it, is not even complete yet. Technically, it's not even optimal because it's not all glowing yet. But yeah, that's my own personal little truffle worm farm. Very simple, very basic, but very effective. So again, just gotta find a nice little isolated area where enemies aren't gonna be spawning. As you can see, walled off, walled off, and watered off. So basically, they'll only be able to spawn here. Maybe a little bit down here, I did fill this in. But yeah, get all the truffle worms you need. Whether or not you like finding Duke Fish Run, you're farming for a specific item, or maybe you keep dying to Duke Fish Run. Anyways, this will get you all the glow wor er, glowing worms, <laughs> the truffle worms, you're going to need for that fight. And yes, we will be finding Duke Fish Run fairly soon. Maybe not soon soon, but it's definitely on the horizon. But with that being said, I'm going to let all this spread so beautifully, and let's go work on a new set of wings, quote unquote. Alright, here we are back at base. So, we are going to be making a hoverboard. Now, the reason I don't really like to use the hoverboard is because it only has vertical, or not vertical, horizontal movement. Well, it doesn't only have that, but that's what it's best at. And one thing I've learned from finding these bosses recently, I kind of need that horizontal movement. So, what we're going to need is, let me see, 20 souls of flight. Makes sense, I guess. And we're going to be needing some shroomite bars. How much? I believe it's 18. So let's go do that real quick. So for that, we need 18 chlorophyte bars. You don't want to make too many. I mean, worst case scenario, we have something else to craft, but don't want to waste anything. Go over here to our auto hammer. Turn those all into shroomite bars. Now let's make a hoverboard. We'll reforge it later, but for now, let's actually get the thing. And kaboom, we have ourselves a hoverboard, which, in case you're curious, is Shroomite tier, or on tier with the Spectre wings. So it's not like I took a downgrade. Don't worry, I'm not going to do that. But if we equip it real quick, and take off her cape just for a moment, or blanket, you can see it's a full-on hoverboard, and has very stable horizontal movement. It does have vertical, but it's the horizontal we really want. Is it the best? Is it the worst? I thought I'd try it out and see. So with that being said, you know what? Let's farm up a solar eclipse, shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Oh, I was going to fight a solar eclipse, but it looks like pirates want to invade instead. So, you know what? That's a good opportunity because... Let's see, we can get the pirate staff, and we can also get... The discount card, which would be nice for dealing with the goblin. So I'll come back to when the pirates get here, and we'll fight some pirates instead of Solar Eclipse. We'll do the Solar Eclipse next time. As I sit here, I wonder, when I spawn a summon in, where exactly are they spawning from? And the pirates are here. Alright, discount card, please come to me. <laughs> now we are summoners, so we're going to be very weak. We're just going to mostly let our summon do a lot of the work, and maybe try to take out a captain if we see it. Like that. And let the tiger take care of it, and don't die to the ghost. There we go. No discount card, though. You know, it's fairly, this is actually be a lot easier being a summoner, because our summon's just going to take care of everything. And I see another pirate captain, so focus on tiger. Got him, and dead. This event's going to go a lot quicker, but you know what else? It's going to be a lot safer, because I'm not going to be dying every other minute. Now what we're looking for is the pirate ship. The Flying Dutchman, the whatever you want to call it. Sure, we can get some more banners, but it's not like it's going to help us. We already have, I think, all the banners we need. Alright, Captain or Pirate Ship, where are you? Not exactly in a pirate mood today, but hey, there it is. Alright, Tiger, take care of the ship. And you really are taking care of that ship. <laughs> I'm, it's not an understatement to say this tiger and firecracker setup is actually very strong. Oh, another one. Good. You have, I believe, the highest chances of dropping what we're looking for. So come on, tiger. Destroy the pirate ship. You know what? Torreo's weird, but I love it. <laughs> and another one down. Well, that's a gold ring. 
Can we transmute that into a card? We'll have to find out after the fight. And by transmute, I mean Shimmer. And we almost died, as you can see, but we didn't. And the pirate evasion is done. Well, got sidetracked, but you know what? We did it without dying, so personal achievement acquired. Now let the tiger finish up the rest, and let's see what loot we get. Alright, looks like we have a couple pair of pants, some swords, some gold, a lot of gold actually, some gold furniture. There it is! The discount card! It dropped before, but it wasn't on camera, so it didn't count, but there it is! Oh, we finally got the discount card. Goblin, you're not going to be a nightmare anymore. <laughs> and an eye patch. Cool. You know what? I'm going to celebrate real quick. I'm going to put this golden chest I just got from them. And put all this stuff in there. But you know what? We got the gold ring, and we got the discount card. That's huge. What's even more impressive about that is the fact that I already had a discount card that was off camera, so I didn't count it. But now that's official, we're done. Yay! <laughs> now, the discard, discount card important? Yeah, as you saw, the goblin ripped me off for like 60 platinum last time I was reforging. So when it comes to our new hoverboard, it should be a lot cheaper. Now, there's still two things I want to do. First off, we have to go back to our base. Luckily, it's in walking distance. Reset our spawn point. Although, we're going to have to reset it anyways when we take on Solar Eclipse next time. But what I want right now is... where is it? Iron. There it is. We have a lot of iron. So you might be asking, what am I doing with this iron? Well, first I'm going to make about a hundred bars. I said about a hundred, so here we go. Eh, 102, close enough. Now, let me just check with the guide real quick. And... there it is. Two per chest. So, I have been spawning chests in, you know, like right now, I spawned one in right here just for inventory management. I've been doing that because I kind of misplaced my chest chest. I think it's down here in my super mega ultra storage, but I can't confirm it right now. I will be sorting my inventory soon. I hope I get to it soon at least. So, I've been spawning chests. I'm like, well, I have the chest, but I haven't been deleting the ones I've been spawning. So to, well, shall we say, pay for the damages, I'm getting rid of a ton of iron, and it's gone. Never to be seen again. That is about 51 chests worth of iron. So that way, if I can't find my chest chest, it pays for itself. Now, that being said, there's one last thing I wanted to do. Let's see, creature shampoo, or critter shampoo, for... Wait, that accessory? I don't want it to be accessory, I want it to be vanity. So, if I did this correctly, let's get ourselves some dye. I'm looking for... let's see, where's orange? Not flame... Uh, orange, orange... Where's regular? There it is, regular orange. So, if I do this... Um, let's see the tiger, and... Yeah, they're kind of orange. Not exactly the orange I was hoping for, more like orange accents. So let's see, what other orange can we get? Let's see, we can get silver and orange. Black and orange. And let's see what these look like. So, that's what I'm talking about. That's more like a traditional tiger. And that's not. Alright, I said we were going to name our pet tiger Pura, and now it's orange, like a traditional tiger, like Pura from Crash Bandicoot. <laughs> Success. Well, I said it was going to be a short episode, and kind of was, but hey, we made progress, we have a lot of truffle worms hidden away, we got a discount card, which we weren't even planning on doing, and we officially have Pura, our pet tiger, who likes to eviscerate everything. Yay, successful episode. So, next time around, Solar Eclipse, maybe a little bit more Golem, and maybe a new boss. Or a building. We'll see whatever mood I'm in. <laughs> well, that was a lot of fun, and I hope you enjoyed as much as I enjoyed playing. This has been The Mechanist, logging off. Until next time.